And we're back with another lesson in pre-calculus. Today, it's the power rule. And it is the last lesson of pre-calculus, at least most likely, unless things change in the near future. But here we go with the very last thing, and it's a pretty easy lesson. I think you'll enjoy this, because we're going to talk about doing some shortcuts. First of all, we now no longer are going to have to do that long limit rule for the definition of derivative. There are faster ways to figure out the derivative. For example, if the derivative is just the slope of the tangent line, what if we have are taking the derivative of some constant? You know, like if I say, if we take the, think about this, if I have f of x and it equals some number, let's just say the number 2, well, what does that graph look like? That is a horizontal line. It's a flat line. And what is the slope of a flat line? It's 0. And so the, sl the derivative of a constant is 0. That's the slope of a flat line. So real quick here, find the derivative of the following. It's simple. It's just dy dx, and it equals 0. In this case, dy dx, 3 times pi is just a number. So it's just very simple. 0. And again here, well, let's do uh, Lagrange notation. Let's just say y prime, and it equals 0. Okay, real simple. If the, you have a number, and that's all this is, even with an e or with a pi, it's just a number. It's a constant. So there you go. Derivative is 0. Now let's get into the power rule, which is this cool shortcut. If you have x being raised to some power, then the, what the power rule does, if you take the derivative of it, is that exponent gets to come down to the front, and then you subtract 1. So let me say that again. The exponent there drops down to the front, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So watch how easy this is. dy over dx, so dy dx equals, so the 4 comes down, and then we take our x, and then the 4 and the exponent subtracts 1, and it becomes 3. The derivative! That is it. That's an equation that gives us the tangent line, or the slope of the tangent line, I should say. So much faster than trying to deal with that long limit as h approaches 0, x plus h, blah, blah, blah. So quick and easy there. OK, so what about if you have a number in front? It's still just as easy. h prime of r equals. So what I'm going to do here is let's leave that this 3 just in the front. So we're going to say 3 times. And now we'll take care of this r cubed stuff. The 3 comes down, and then it's r squared. You subtract 1 from the exponent. So then our derivative of h is h prime of r equals 9r squared. There's the derivative that gives us an equation of the slope of the tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change. All right, last one. So this one, let's, uh, let's rewrite this so you can see this a little bit more clearly. And that is, this is the same thing as 1 fourth t to the seventh. If you think of it this way, that make, might make a little bit more sense. So then when we take the derivative, s of t, or I should say s prime of t, s prime of t will equal, let's leave this 1 fourth right there, and then we're going to times it by the derivative of this thing, which is 7t to the sixth. And then our final answer, s prime of t, OK, that's supposed to be a t, there we go, equals 7 fourths t to the sixth. There's our answer. Box that thing. There we go. All right, so power rule really speeds things up for us. That's very nice. Now, not every single one of our problems is going to be that easy. There are things that we might need to do to, to, to rewrite our problems. So for example, before we take the derivative of number 7, let's rewrite it. So we get y equals, rewrite it so we can see the power. So this is going to become 5x to the negative 2. You remember this rule where you have fractions, you can bring it to the top by just changing the exponent to a negative. Now when we take the derivative, so we'll get dy dx equals, bring the negative 2 down, and that becomes a negative 10 here in front, 5 times negative 2, x to the, now you have to subtract 1. If you subtract 1, you get negative 3. Don't make the mistake and say negative 1. You're not adding 1 to a negative 2, you're subtracting 1. And so then we go to our final answer, 
dy dx equals. Now, let's think about this. What drops down here to the bottom? Just the variable x. So we're going to have negative. The 10 stays up on top because it had an exponent of 1. And you have x cubed that drops down to the bottom. And there's our derivative for number 7. Number 8. So this one will say f prime. Actually, no, not f prime. Let's just rewrite it first. So we're going to practice rewriting this so we can see the power. So if we can see what the exponent is of the t, that's t raised to the 1 half. Now once you see that, it will, the power rule can take effect, and it's a little easier. So f of t equals the 1 half comes down, t raised to the negative 1 half. Okay, so now what? let's see what happens here. We get, uh, oh, I forgot to say the prime, sorry, f prime, because that is the derivative. So then we'll go f prime of t equals, okay, so what drops down here? This t is going to drop down because of the negative exponent. So let's make a fraction. What's going to be in the numerator? Just the number 1, that's it. Just this 1 here up on top. This 2 here is going to be down on the bottom, and then you have t to the 1 half, which is the square root of t. So t raised to the 1 half on bottom here would just be the same thing as the square root of t, and there is our derivative. So again, what is the derivative? It represents an equation that helps us get the slope of the tangent line at any point we want on the square root of t graph. Okay, number 9. Let's do this. In fact, why don't you pause this one? Try this one on your own. Pause now, and I'll have the answer appear. And there's our answer to number 9. We have 3 over 7, and then the 7th root of w to the 4th. So the big thing here was to, to recognize that we had to rewrite this as 3 sevenths. Okay, so that was what our exponent was, and then from there, the 3 sevenths comes down, and you have to subtract an entire 1. Well, what is the number 1 in this case? 1 would be subtracting 7 over 7. So you had to think about that with our fractions going on here. 3 sevenths minus 7 sevenths is a negative 4 sevenths. That's where this comes from. Okay, going on to number 10. Now we've got this stuff dealing with addition or subtraction. It's really simple. You don't do anything different than we've done before. Because wherever there's addition and subtraction, you just take each individual term. So 1, 2, 3, 4. You just take these four terms and you treat them like their own separate little problems. So we're going to say, uh, let me change my colors, dy dx equals, so let's bring that 3 down. 3 times 7 is 21x squared. And then the next term, plus... And now the 2 comes down, 2 times 6 is 12x to the first power, so I don't need to write that. And then here, it, the 1 comes down, so it's minus 1x to the 0. Now I don't need to write x to the 0, because x to the 0 is just nothing. So it's not necessary to write that. So if I just have an x, then this, this, it's just the, whatever the coefficient is. And then plus 3, what's the derivative of a constant? It's 0. So again, I would have a plus 0, but that's not really necessary to write that part. So there is our derivative all done. The next one, before we take the derivative, let's rewrite this so we can very clearly see what the uh, what all the exponents are. If we can't see the exponents, it makes it harder to use the power rule. We want to see those powers. So 5x to the negative 1 and then minus 6x7 raised to the 7 thirds. Okay, now we can take the derivative. So we go dy, dx, and then that equals 4 comes down. We get 120x cubed. And then the negative 1 comes down. So negative 1 times 5 will be a minus 5x to the negative 2 minus the 7 thirds comes down. So let's do, we're going to have the 6 there, times 7 thirds x to the, okay, so what are we doing now? We're going to subtract 3 thirds from the exponent. So 7 thirds minus 3 thirds would give us 4 thirds. Okay, now we can clean things up a bit and we're all finished. So dy dx equals 
First term, nothing really changes here. We get 120x cubed. And then the next term, this is where we're going to have, let's see, the 5 stays in the numerator. And then the x squared will jump down here. So we get an x squared because of the negative exponent. And then what's next here? Minus 6 divided by 3. So can we simplify this whole fraction here? 6 over 3 is 2 times 7, 14 x to the 4 thirds. Now we could write we could write the cube root of x to the 4th. You could write it that way as well. Either one of those would work and be okay for this. So, uh, whoops, there is our answer. And sometimes you'll say, well, how do I know which one to, to use, which one? Well, you got to know both of them because if this was a multiple choice test, you might see this answer right here instead of the one that I have written up here. And you just got to know that they're the same thing. So which one to choose for multiple choice? Okay, moving along here. Next, we'll have situations when we take the derivative where you want to simplify it. It's not just rewriting the problem, but it's actually trying to simplify it first. Like maybe you have to multiply out some things and then take the derivative. There's this thing later on in calculus called the quotient rule. And a lot of students would use a quotient rule on this, which actually is not a very good thing to do because it's more confusing actually. It's more complicated. Watch this. This is just the same thing as 3x squared over x minus 8x over x minus 2 over x. And when you treat it this way, then what are we going to get? We're going to get y equals, you should probably be writing smaller than I am because, uh, yeah, I'm going to run out of room here real quick, 3x minus 8 minus, and then this becomes 2x to the negative 1. Okay, so now when we take the derivative, now that we've rewritten it, this actually becomes a pretty quick problem. Derivative of the 3x term is just a 3. The derivative of minus 8 is a constant, so the derivative of that is just a 0. And then minus 2, so the negative 1 comes down and it combines with this negative, so we'll get a plus 2x to the negative 2. So we'll rewrite our final answer. The dy dx equals 3 plus and then the 2 has the first power here. See, it's a 2 to the 1, so the 2 stays on top over x squared. The negative exponent will bring it down. Okay, let's do this one. Number 3, let's try to simplify as much as we can. So we're not taking any derivatives yet. We have x to the first power. We're going to subtract the exponent on bottom. Well, what's the exponent on bottom? 1 half. Okay, where am I getting this rule? This is how you divide bases that are the same. You subtract the exponents. So 1 minus 1 half. Well, that means this is y equals x to the 1 half. 1 minus a half is a half. Now you take the derivative of this and you get dy dx equals 1 half x to the negative one half. Final answer then, we can clean this up, dy dx equals 1 over 2 square root of x. All right, we're almost done. Look how fast and easy this whole lesson was. Last one, and that is figuring out how to find horizontal tangents. All right, so let's think about this for a minute before we start working on on this. What is a horizontal tangent? What I did is with this graph, I, I put the graph of it on your notes there, so you should be able to see that. Where would we have a horizontal tangent? So you've got these lines, these imaginary lines, all along here where we'd have these tangent lines going off. So where would we have a tangent line that is a horizontal line? That's what we're trying to think of, a tangent line where we'd have horizontal. Well, here's one of them. So sketch that real quick on your graph, that horizontal tangent line. So it's right here where you have that maximum point. And then where would the other tangent line be? Down here at the minimum point where you'd have a horizontal tangent line. So there is the other one down here. So sketch th those two things. And how would we find figure that out? Well, we want to know when the slope of the tangent line is 0. See, the slope would be 0. Or in other words, when would the derivative of f equal 
zero. That's the spot we're looking for. So well, the first thing to do is take the derivative of this whole thing. So let's take the derivative. So we have 5 thirds times the 3 comes down, so we have 3x squared. And then minus the 2 comes down, and you get minus 12x. And what else here? The derivative of negative 9x is just going to be negative 9. And then the derivative of the 2 constant is 0, so we don't need to put that down. Okay, let's clean this up. The 3's cancel. Next line down, we have 5x squared minus 12x minus 9. Now, this represents the derivative. And what we said before is, in order to find a horizontal tangent line, that represents the slope being 0. So we want the derivative to equal 0. That's how you find a horizontal tangent. So when does this equal 0? How do you solve this thing? Well, you could use the quadratic formula if you wanted, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Or, a lot of times on these problems, they will factor nice and neat. Okay, I'm not going to go through a whole lesson on how to factor, but if you factor this thing out, you'll end up with, let's see, one is a plus and one's a minus. They're both going to be 3, I remember that. Let's think through which one's which. 5 times 3 would give us negative 15, and then we add the 3, there we go. So there's our factors, and then you set those equal to 0 and solve them. Here you're going to end up with x equals negative 3 fifths, and this one x equals 3 when you choose those. Now it does say the points, so what we need to do is we take negative 3 fifths, and we're supposed to plug it into the x and plug it into that x, and plug it into that x. This is probably where I'm going to grab a calculator to help me out, and that'll make it a little bit faster for getting our answer. So here I have my calculator where I plugged in our original function. Now the reality is, if I was just looking for where the points of the max and min are on this, where the horizontal line would be tangent, yeah, I could just graph it and do second calculate and calculate the max and min, but that's not practicing calculus. So we're trying to cal practice some calculus here by finding horizontal tangents. So I plugged it in there. I'm going to go to table setup, make sure that my independent is on ask, and then that way when I go to my table, watch how easy this is. I'm going to plug in, where are my numbers? Uh, negative 3 fifths and 3. So negative 3 fifths. Enter. And... 3, enter. So I get two different points. I get, yeah, let's drag that down here so I can see it. My answer then would be uh, negative 3 fifths comma 4.88. Now, yeah, you could use change that to a fraction if you wanted to convert that to a fraction. And then my other point would be 3 comma negative 34. So those are these two points right there and right there that have some horizontal tangents. That's the end of the lesson, and it's the end of the year for you in pre-calculus. Congratulations on making it all the way through. Not all of the students that are in your class right now, I better make it this far. So nice job. Good luck next year for those of you who go, are going on to calculus, and uh, hopefully this gets you a little bit of a, an excitement for it and also will make the beginning of next year a little easier. And this is Mr. Bean giving my final sign-off of the year. Rock that mastery check.